It shows you how much Memorial Arena was a part of our lives in Victoria, that it was the scene not just of championship moments, but humble beginnings. Like Jeff, Russ Courtner learned to skate in the old barn when Archie started teaching him at the age of three. Then when he was drafted by the Memorial Arena Maple Buds, his dad was also recruited to coach. As Russ got a little older, they shifted to the racket club where things were a bit more organized. When he was five and six, Russ was holding his own with the nine and ten-year-olds. Archie continued as his coach through the Pee Wee years and right through Bantams, where he was always a Victoria Racket Club rep player. But hockey wasn't everything for young Russ Cortnell. As with Jeff, there was also soccer, and Saturday mornings were spent with his trophy-winning Lansdowne Evening Optimist team. Then he and his Willow School teammates were the city school soccer champions. When the good weather came, he was one of the boys of summer, playing ball for the Allenby Park Giants through to Carnarvon Park Pony League. However, Russ's speed and energy on skates, quick hands and forceful hockey talent saw him move up through the ranks at the racket club. He led his teams through the Bantam and Midget divisions and then followed Jeff to Wilcox and two seasons at Notre Dame. Father Athel Murray's Catholic prep school was serious about hockey and so was his coach, former national team member Barry McKenzie. It's okay Russ, we won't show the inside. Russ developed into one of the top midget level players in the country, scoring 143 points in his last season in the Saskatchewan League, earning MVP at a top level Swift Current tournament, and then leading the Hounds to the Air Canada Cup National Midget Finals here in Victoria. The Hounds finished fourth in that tournament. Russ was thrilled to play in such a prestigious tournament in his hometown, but he was especially happy since it was the first time that year his mom had a chance to see him in action. What Kathy Courtnell saw impressed everyone, including newly appointed Cougars coach Dave Andrews, who set out to trade for the younger Courtnell brother. The Medicine Hat Tigers owned Russ's rights, but working in Andrews' favor were Russ's stated desire to play with Jeff and Victoria, and also the scholarship offers he was getting from Boston College, Boston University, Princeton, Yale, and Michigan State. Eventually, Andrews swung a three-way deal to get Russ to the Cougars. Prior to arriving at camp, Jeff offered his 17-year-old brother a nickel's worth of free advice. Move the puck faster and get your shots off quicker. Russ can testify that the advice is right on. It was, he said later, quite a transition from midget to major junior. Russ came to camp with one goal, to make the team. But when Andrews was making his final cuts, he gave Russ some sage advice about the future. Change your priorities, the coach told him. You've made the team. Now concentrate on being a number one draft pick. He did, and played center with Jeff, who looked out for his young brother as one of his wingers. If Russ found it a tough move, it wasn't evident in the scoring stats. Thirteen games into the season, the Cougar scoring sheet listed Jeff as the leading scorer, and Russ as the number two point getter on the team. After scoring 36 times and accumulating 97 points in 60 rookie season games, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Archie Cortnell's favorite team, took note and in the 1983 entry draft made him their first round pick, seventh overall. After representing Canada at the 1984 Winter Olympics in Sarajevo, Russ, just turned 19, was called up to the Leafs. There he was reunited with one of his Notre Dame teammates, Gary Lehman. In that extra special year, he also suited up for Canada at the World Junior Championships. In his rookie season with the woeful Leafs, Russ managed only 12 goals. Although his production was not high and he sometimes seemed to be left on his own, his speed opened up opportunities for his line mates. In Russ's second season, he had his most memorable game when he scored his first NHL hat trick and added three assists on November 23rd, his father's birthday. The opponents? The Detroit Red Wings, who had owned Archie Cortnell's rights years before. That season he broke the 20-goal barrier, he finished fourth also in the team in points. His numbers improved the following season, but the Leafs preferred big rough-and-tumble players rather than speed and finesse. Although he was their leading scorer in 86-87 with 29 goals and 44 assists, the coach tried to force Russ into playing a tougher brand of hockey, but his production fell off and Leafs management grew dissatisfied with their first-round pick. Nine games into the 88-89 season, he was dealt to Montreal. Although his stock had diminished, most believed Les Canadiens had made Le Steel. Russ sure thought so and played like he had something to prove. With a respectable 22 goals in the regular season, his lightning-fast skating and nifty moves made him a fan favorite in a city used to the likes of the Richards, Cornwallais and Lafleur. He saved his best for the playoffs for the Habs reached the Stanley Cup Finals before losing to Calgary. 
In 21 postseason games, Russ contributed 8 goals and 13 points. He enjoyed another two and a half seasons in Montreal, and during that time, he and Jeff played together for Canada at the 1991 World Championships in Finland. But 1991-92 turned into a nightmare with a couple of serious injuries and some nastiness in the Montreal media, of whom Larry Robinson once said, they're behind you, win or tie. Russ wound up packing his bags again, this time heading to Minnesota and then to Dallas, where again he would show that there was no questioning his talent, his ability, or his desire. 79 points in 1992-93, 80 in 93-94, and he set the franchise record for most assists by a right winger. Late in the 94-95 season, he was traded to the Canucks, where once again he was excited to be teamed with Jeff for 13 league and 11 playoff games. Jeff moved on, but Russ, or Rusty as Jim Robson liked to call him on the radio, stayed to play another two years in Vancouver before being traded to the New York Rangers in time for their run at the 1997 championship. The following season saw him signed as a free agent with the Los Angeles Kings, where he played until his retirement in 1999, finishing his NHL career with 336 goals and 491 assists in 1,158 games. The island-born, Victoria-raised Cortnell brothers, who both played for the Junior Cougars, set an NHL fraternal longevity record by playing over a thousand league games each, something the great Esposito, Hull, Mahovlich and Richard brothers failed to accomplish. To his long list of achievements, we now add one more as we proudly induct into the Greater Victoria Sports Hall of Fame NHL great Russ Courtnell.